The expenditure for the restoration of economic balance is a much-needed antidote to revitalizing the social and business well-being of Lagos State. In achieving this, Governor Babajide Sombolu presented the 2021 budget to the Lagos State House of Assembly, saying it will accelerate the provision of employment opportunities, welfare, security, and also bring about social engagement for the youths in the state. Welcome to the Governor This Week. I am Likon Onobanjo. Lagos State Government during the week hosted some governors of the Southwest states, political leaders, traditional rulers and leaders of thought across the region to a peace dialogue, which emanated from the threat posed by the recent destruction of key public assets to the economy of the Southwest. Governor Babajide Sobolu was also in attendance and it was a time for people of influence with patriotic intent to come together to discuss the way forward. The dialogue was meant to forge a common front with traditional institutions in addressing the issues that led to the recent nationwide youth demonstration which ended in violence and shook the region to its foundation. This stakeholder engagement will not have come at a better time than now when we have serious issues confronting the existence of our people. Of course, issues around security, good governance, economy, social investment are on our front burner and they are very important national resources. For recent events, as rightly said by the chairman of Southwest Governors Forum, are things that are very disturbing to each and every one of us. But I'm, I imagine that at the end of today's meeting and dialogue, we will also have engaged ourselves sufficiently to be able to see ways and means of taking our region forward. And I want to thank Mr. President, I want to thank our Honorable Ministers for finding out time to be here with us this afternoon. The governors are doing their job, so we cannot begin to thank ourselves for doing our job. We want to thank others that are part of it. I'll just ask that they show us the four or five minutes pictures of some of the recent things that have happened in Lagos. So just call it a, an aftermath of the events. So these are pictures of all the brand new buses that we just brought in um, just about three, four months ago, we lost um, over 130 of them. And, and um, this is our famous city hall in Lagos. All of the floors were destroyed. Uh, my predecessor, Governor, Governor uh, Minister Pachola, rebuilt city hall. This is the oldest court. That's the Goshiri Magistrate Court, over two centuries. It was also raised down. Um, and these are part of other government institutions. This is the NPA building and marina, and you can see. Well, <clears throat> we're not talking about what has happened now. We're on the journey of rebuilding Lagos, rebuilding the Southwest for all of us. Thank you very much for listening. Eshikonyo and Babawa. Thank you very much. I would like to expand, extend the gratitude of His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari to Dr. Rotimi Akere Dulu, the Chairman of the Southwest Governors Forum, who has been a gracious coordinator of this presidential delegation to the Southwest. Mr. President also would like to appreciate and thank Governor Babajide Sangwolu for being such a generous host and by extension to all the governors Southwest, who are physically present here today. His Excellency President Buhari has also directed me to express special appreciation to us, royal fathers and traditional rulers, not only to participate in this important engagement process, but for the warm reception extended to my delegation and I on this visit. Events of the last few weeks have given us all cause to retrace our steps and to ask some very real difficult questions about the state of our country and the future of, of the nation. And about how those who feel pain and exploited by the same system that was designed to protect and provide them with safety should express this harm. Mr. President is acutely aware of the level of destruction that was brought about by elements who
who sabotaged what began as a seemingly innocent outcry for justice of Chinese and eventually metamorphosized into mob action and criminality that was intent on destroying businesses and homes owned by innocent Nigerians. Public assets were also not spared. Symbols and icons of history and our great traditions were set ablaze and vandalized. Indeed, last Friday, just this last Friday, Governor Sangulu was received in audience by His Excellency President Buhari at the State House in Abuja, where he presented a very graphic pictorial demonstration of the extent of the damage in Lagos Metropolis and in the state, which has just shown us right here. The president was just shocked by the level of destruction and particularly uh, by the, the youth, some of the youths who were misused by those who are in the process, who actually will be the biggest beneficiary of peace and social economic development in this country. This unfortunate incident emerged as the nation struggles to confront the fallout of COVID-19 pandemic, which has caused significant damage to our already fragile economy, which requires diversification and a shift from being a monoproduct economy. An economy that is dominated by informal sector, an economy that must improve its productivity and efficiency and ensure inclusion of its most important competitive advantage, which is its use. True that our youth have been ignored for a very long time. We can no longer afford to do so. The commitment to their future must go beyond talk, but should seek to equip them with the skills that can make them competitive for the future that lies ahead. The purpose of this engagement is really to exchange frank views and opinions on what the federal government has been and the state government have done and what need, more needs to be done in order to assure the future of our youths and maximize their contribution to state building. Governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sumbolu, unveiled a 2021 budget proposal of 1.155 trillion naira at the State House of Assembly, titled The Budget of Rekindling Hope. The governor revealed that his administration will be investing heavily in the development of human capital with special focus on youth empowerment and employment and the provision of social safety for young people. The budget presentation provides an opportunity to enunciate our fiscal vision for the next one year, while quantifying our challenges, our triumphs, and developmental achievements in the last 10, 11 months. In November 2019, I presented a year 2020 comprehensive budget to this Honorable House in line with the policy trust of our administration, which was christened the budget of awakening to a greater Lagos. I'm here today present the 2021 appropriation budget, which we have rightly christened the budget of rekindled hope. The budget of rekindled hope. The year 2021 is one of a rekindled hope in accordance with recent events of global and national proportions, especially the COVID-19 pandemic and the very recent NSAS protests, the general feeling of disenchantment in the polity, the social economic yearnings of Lagosians for good governance, and the stringent calls in all societal spheres for a more representative democracy that speaks to the issues of sovereign wealth, that speaks to economic growth, that speaks to consistent progress and equitable quality of life. Mr. Speaker, the 2021 appropriation bill encompasses the message of a rekindled hope, the same message that we had been disseminating to Lagosians since March when we experienced the first COVID-19 case. 
And since October 11, when the NSAS protest first erupted in Lagos State, more than ever before, our government remains committed to communal cohesiveness and inter-ethnic unity. We will resist every attempt to cause division amongst the numerous ethnic nationalities who call Lagos their home. Lagos State remain a microsome of the entire African continent and a melting point for all Nigerians. Nothing and no one can undermine our security, our continued oneness, and our unraveled dedication to the prosperity of our people. This budget preparation and presentation reflects our desire to rebuild the trust of our people in this government, even as we commit significant human and financial resource to the rebuilding of Lagos while doing all we can to move on from the very unfortunate losing, arson, destruction, and vandalization which we witnessed in this state barely three weeks ago. We, however, remain focused despite these challenges. This is who we are as Lagosians. We bounce back, we adapt, we thrive, regardless of the circumstance and the situation. The challenge of COVID-19 created a social distancing that has indeed laid the foundation for Lagos as a smart city state with the intention of being the technology hub for Africa and this believe would outlast even the pandemic. To boost employment and to encourage entrepreneurs, a total of 103 billion was invested in infrastructure to signal our fate in the future. We provide employment and downstream contracts for MSMEs. In addition, we extended tax filing deadlines by 60 days. We gave loan moratorium of over 90 days to ease the working capital of all of these small businesses. We also committed about $5 billion to enable the Lagos Employment Trust Fund leverage additional $10 billion in support to MSMEs with very low interest rate. We also provide, we provided 19 job pro programs which limits layoff and stimulated growth in high employment. This program created about 395,000 jobs directly over the last few months in construction and agriculture specifically. And we saw that the average wage income from all of these jobs that were created was about 55,000 Naira. September 2020, our total revenue performance is about, about 98%, while our total expenditure and total recurring expenditure is at 71% and 83% respectively. At the end of the first quarter 2020, our total budget performance was just about 56%, and that moved to about 58% at the, set, at the end of second quarter. But I'm glad to announce that at the end of third quarter, we had actually gone to 77% of our budget performance. We're believing that given the trend that we've seen, that by the end of the fourth quarter, your budget, the budget that we came and you passed for us, will do about 88 to 89% budget performance. Although revenue collection remains a major challenge, we'll continue to enjoin negotiants to pay their correct taxes so that we can all enjoy inclusive development, which is a major thrust of this administration. On our part, we'll assiduously work at improving the tax system through the revolutionary reforms that will enable easy tax collection and payments. Another major achievement in our ongoing fiscal cycle is a successful review, together with the House, of the 2018 Land Use Charge Law. This law now accommodates the yearnings of Lagosians for a more friendly, modern, and realistic land use charge. We strongly believe that with the new Land Use Charge Law and other complementary initiatives like the EGIS, the E-Tax and the Lagos Real Estate Regulatory Authority, La Serrera, the electronic platform, the sector will be better organized. We'll be able to provide improved service from government to our various stakeholders.
Abia State Governor Okezik Biazu was the guest of Governor Babajide Sobolu at the government house Alausa when it came to commiserate with him over the violent incidents in the state. Biazu said criminals who carried out the coordinated attacks on public assets and private businesses in Lagos State orchestrated the violence to hurt the whole country. Governor Somodu thanked the Abia State Governor for taking the pain to identify with the residents over the violence. He promised that Lagos State's government would continue to support business aspirations of the Igbo community and protect their rights to live in Lagos. I'm delighted to be here this afternoon to firstly commiserate and show concern to my brother on the events that happened across Nigeria a few weeks ago. I am particularly touched by what happened in Lagos because of the way it affected him personally and uh, the good people of Lagos State. I bring you warm greetings from Abia State and also say that um, working with him and other leaders in our country, we will think deeply and come out with uh, projects and programs that will include the youth population of our country and respective states. We will also mainstream um, the entire strata of, uh, of uh, our society, women, young people, and even the elderly in our projects to make sure that everybody feels the impact of government. We want to urge our youths to exercise restraint and a little patience and to find a way to develop faith in uh, governance and government. Um, the recent events in America has shown that uh, most countries are challenged. We are not the only people that are challenged. Most countries are challenged. But the thing that is true in all of this is that it is our people that will solve our problem. We can't import those that will help us solve our own problems. It's been a difficult time for all of us in position of leadership. It's been a very, very challenging time um, for various levels of leadership, not only in our country, but globally. You know, we're all dealing with um, different strata of disturbance, different economic health issues, you know, and it's, um, it's such a time where all of us need to bring up our A team, you know, and be rest assured that um, we can indeed push the level of governance to a higher level. Um, what we have seen or what we saw in, in the past couple of weeks um, in Lagos and some other parts of the country are a clear on call and a reflection of um, some of the um, gaps that are in our system. And you and I have discussed even before coming um, out here and we've shared experiences, you know, on what are the things that we can, you know, take away, you know, concrete take away from um, the disturbance, the protests that we've seen. You know, and as leaders, we should not gloss over these things. We should not just carpet them. We should indeed face them frontally and be able to deal with them. Because what is the whole essence of governance is really to bring about better, you know, um, livelihood for our people, creating an ambience where they can do well, and the protection of life and property. And I'm sure that um, we will not, you know, relent on, on, on those, on those responsibilities. For us in Lagos, um, we have moved on. We are moving on. We're actually healing ourselves. You know, we are more than ever before creating engagement and collaborations where we can build bridges and we can build connecting dots, you know, not only for our youth, you know, not only for our ethnic nationals, for, but for even um, our women and ensure that indeed we have genuine real reconciliation. We speak truth to ourselves. Just before this meeting, I'll just have a meeting with my local government chairman, and we're speaking, you know, real um, um, frag talk to ourselves. How do we need to raise, you know, the collateral of governance? You know, how do we ensure that the people that we have sworn to lead, they see us from that angle of indeed putting our very best to it. And so we are committed. And we know that, um, yes, to assets, unfortunately have been ruined, lives unfortunately have been lost, but we will pick up the, the, the pieces together and come out of it stronger, bigger, and better. You know, um, for us, it's, it's always an interesting thing when youth think that they've not been given a, a right space. 
You know, my head of service that you mentioned is not only the young one there. In the cabinet, there are about five of them that are actually under 40, right? I mean, uh, some of our, you know, big commissioners are all in their mid-30s and early 30s. You know, just so to show that indeed it's about the future. It's about, I mean, all of them. And, and we will not stop at that. We will ensure that we'll continue to have those levels of engagement, those levels of collaborations, you know, with them. Because that's really why we're in government, you know, and also to, to say that um, events happening around us in other part of the world are, are clear on call for all of us to ensure that we just continue to put our very best, you know, into it. And a couple of days ago, you know, um, which you also com commented on, and we had meetings with all of our royal fathers, you know, at the various, you know, regional level. And it's all the same thing, you know. Um, they also want further engagement, further collaboration, you know, um, at each of those levels. And that, that's really what we've, we've committed to do. And, and we're, we're believing that as we wrap up the year and get into a new year, um, we will see further, bigger collaboration and engagement with the youth. We, we, we read a budget yesterday that was totally focused on creating opportunity, creating um, um, job opportunity, wealth for the youth, for the women, for the less privileged in health, in education, in infrastructure. You know, so it's about them. Indeed, it's, it's, it's about them, you know, and, and the voices will be heard. You know, we've picked up the pieces together and we're saying that um, not only will Lagos come out better, I imagine Nigeria too will, will come out, you know, a lot stronger, you know, at the end of all of this exercise. Um, and I want to, um, once again, um, thank you very, very much for taking out this time to be here with us um, this afternoon. Um, Lagos, like you observe, it's, it's, it's a chromosome of Nigeria. It's a melting point of our country, right, where every ethnic nationality is here. You know, and it's a place where we all do business, you know, and so we, we, I mean, we're going to buy meat. We don't ask ourselves, is it a Muslim or a Christian meat? Is it, a, is it, is it you know, is it a, a, an Aousa man or, or a Yoruba man that has baked the bread that we're eating? That's, that's, that's the spirit we have, you know, and that's, that's how we engage ourselves. We do not look at, you know, um, what tribe or what color or what race you come for, for us to engage, you know, um, ourselves. And then um, that, that should be the spirit that we all see around and that's the spirit we're taking you know forward the same day indigenous of southeast and south south living in lagos also paid governor Sonwolu a solidarity visit at the lagos house marina the Igbo leaders who were led by the governor's special advisor on drainage and water resources joe Idokwe, restated their commitments to the growth of lagos responding governor Sonwolu said diversity remained the state's strongest point stating that the spirit of lagos to host visitors and be a melting pot for all ethnic groups have been maintained despite violence visited on the states. We have gone around, Mr. Governor. We saw things destroyed. And um, um, we said we try to, 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 to get disappointment because of the fact that we need to come and commiserate with leaders and to reassure you that. Our people are committed to the growth of this Lagos. Me, what had happened had happened. We've all learned. Earlier today, too, I met with the local government chairman and we had a very frank conversation. Right? And, and I said to them that whatever happens to man, it's not what has happened that God wants you to. Is what you do after what happens that is the strongest you know so for us is not to allow what has happened to to demoralize us or to derail us is to learn from what has happened to pick the pieces together and come out stronger better and bigger and so whilst i want to thank all of you uh, because i know you're just a small delegation here and extend and express my appreciation to your teaming followers and members whilst i appreciate your coming i want to assure you that 
um, the learning point of it will not be lost on us because there are things to be learned. There are jobs to be done. There are collaboration, there are engagements that we need to have. And those are like engagement we will have. Um, those collaborations we will have. And we're believing that at the end of the day, um, Lagos will be on a path that is bigger than where it's coming from, on a path that is stronger than where it is, and on a path that is greater than what all of us can imagine. Because it's only when we do that, that indeed, um, we can be rest assured that we have a future for those children that we're all striving and working for. Looking at the 2021 budget recently presented by Governor Babajide Sombolu, it is safe to say that increments in financial commitments to youth mentoring, mental health support, economic and vocational empowerment is fundamental and well prioritized. This is capable of bringing about transformation in the state and restoring people's confidence in governance. And that's it on the Governor this week. But then you can continue with conversations of the Governor's activities on all these social media platforms showing on your screen. See you next week. I am Likon on Obanjo.